You don't need your help. You don't need your advice. He just needs you to listen. tonight, but it's going to be all right. I believe in getting in trouble. I, I believe it's time for the church to take a stand for some things. Go with me to John chapter 10. I'll title it for you while you're looking for it. John chapter 10, beginning at verse 11. The title of this short talk will be, I told you so. I told you so. Beginning at verse 11, and it reads, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth them. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. All right. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. Yeah. I have power to lay it down, uh -huh. and I have power right. to take it again. Yeah. This commandment have I received of my Father. You may take your Seats. I told you, sir. You've heard that statement before. Have you heard somebody come to you and say, I told you so? In other words, they should have believed you the first time you told them. You gave them warning. You gave them information that they should have validated. They should have been able to believe the declaration that you had made to them before. Yeah. So sometimes when you tell somebody, I told you so, you kind of get smart. <laughs> You ever gotten smart with somebody? I told you. But you told me. <laughs> and I want to tell you that that's exactly what's happening in this passage. Yeah. Literally, in this passage, in the 10th chapter, mind you, the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John, and John is the only one who gets this message. Right. John is told that Jesus is the good shepherd. Not, 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 only, not only is he introducing himself as the good shepherd, he points out what his differences are from a higher man. He lets it be known that his character is different than a higher man. And he wants us to understand that God is expecting him to be who he is. God is expecting him to be the only begotten of God carrying out this great and awesome role to go and to die for the sins of the whole world. And it's an amazing thing because you might think to yourself how strange it is because some of you have probably struggled along the way in your faith wondering why is it that God needed to do it like this? Why, 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 why did God need to send his only begotten son to come and be mistreated by evil folks? Why, why was it necessary to go this particular route? How come God couldn't just declare salvation? How come God didn't just say it's all over, I'll take care of it from here? But no, God is so much God that he won't even let himself off the hook. God, God is so much God that he holds himself accountable. See, you got to get it like this. I want you to start looking at it this way. God is so holy that he's infinitely holy. Are you hearing that? He is infinitely holy. There is no uncleanness in him. Yeah. And then on top of that, he's infinitely in love with you. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Oh, do you hear me? He's infinitely in love with you and he's infinitely on, holy and there's a gap between you and his holiness. Yeah. And the only way that he can bring you together with him is he had to put on flesh yeah. and he had to dwell amongst us Come on. and put Father, forgive them. They know not what 
to God for this revelation. Because my thing, I don't know this, I don't know his secrets. I, I ain't satisfied with just a routine. I want to know the backstory. I want to know what were you up to? Why, why, why did you why did you bother with me?
and, and, then, and then there was something else that jacked me up. I'm jacked up so y'all get to be jacked up with me, okay? We're gonna be all jacked up together. Because it occurred to me that while he was there on the cross, he was still the Word. He was still the Word. And since he was still the Word, if he didn't speak, could he die? If he didn't say, I thirst. If he didn't say, it is finished. You see, he was still in control. Oh yeah, he was dying, but he was, I told you so, he was still in control. Are you hearing me? He was still in control. Yes, he was. He was still in control. So much so that before he gave up the ghost, he said, Father, one more transaction. Will you watch my spirit for me? Till I come back and get it. It'd be good, it'd be good. That's who you serve. So it's not enough. Let me say this, I'm done. It's not enough to be church as usual. Hear me now. The devil is running rampant in the world. And we sitting inside these walls acting like we scared. The devil is a lie. I want you to understand something. You need to go ahead and declare you love the Lord. And that you love him enough to get past yourself and anything else that is keeping you from serving him. You need to get to that place where you do what Jesus did. That I know the Father and the Father knows me. He knows I'm going to do whatever he tells me to do. I got news for you. There's great blessings for the obedient. Yeah. Hallelujah, there's great blessings. You need to hear this. Some of y'all been struggling with something. I want you to know whatever it is that you know you need to give it up. Give it up! Don't, don't wait for permission, just walk away. Do you know the difference between the thief on the left and the thief on the right? Can I tell you? The one that he said today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. The only reason why he could say that to him is because he repented. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this. Can I tell you what makes you a dangerous spiritual warrior? Is when you repent of that thing the devil been holding over your head. Don't let the blood go to to have it less effect on you because you won't repent. Go on and repent and let the blood be full strength in your life. Go on and let something go and receive your cross instead. Go on and let it go. You got so much God and God is so much God that he tell you. See, God don't sell wolf tickets. When God tells you you're going to do something, he put it in a book. So you devil, you want to know what I'm going to do to you? Go read it. We serve a God who can handle his business. So why are you worried? Celebrate this Resurrection Sunday knowing that you have power and authority. Go and give God a praise. You have power and authority. Right where you are, God wants to do great things with you. But this year, I'm telling you, we need to wake up on, on Easter Sunday morning with a heart of repentance. I want you to scare demons when you wake up. I want you to put demons on the run when you wake up. Say, Lord, I repent of that thing that the devil's been holding. Happy Easter.